basically now he's in a calm state. And again, we don't want to make this all just giant malicious forceful grips. I'm just holding the leash in such a way that he can't struggle. And I just have the flesh of his skin just here between my uh, thumb and my index finger. Good. And I'm not going to squeeze it but by the same token. If he tries to escape, he's going to make that discomfort occur, not me. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Slide down the hand or slide down the leg, grab the foot. Nope. Sit. Leave it. Good. And the more he struggles, the more uncomfortable he makes himself. But the thing is, is that the whole session is a half an hour of, of working with him, getting him used to the idea that I can touch him anywhere on his body. Mm -hmm. That's the whole lesson. All right? We don't move to something else until we have completed the first day. Okay? That's the rule. Leave it. Nope. Be still. Good. And again, I'm not doing anything to create that kind of conflict. That's all on him. All I'm doing is holding his feet. Good. But when he struggles, it's not the point to stop. That's when you hold fast and let him figure it out. If you notice, I have this collar, not the other one. Yes. Good. See that? Good. When he's bright, reward him. When he starts to struggle, snug him up, make him finish. The whole point being, if he learns that he cannot defeat, defeat you, good, good. Very nice. All right. The reward is forthcoming when he's relaxed and composed. His whole life has been dedicated to conflict and creating chaos. If I make a big stink, I get what I want. Well, in this case, you can make as big a stink as you want. I'm going to make you do it anyway. Okay? And it's not about beating on him or yelling at him or anything. It's about applying enough force for him to say, it's easier for me to just quit and do this. Okay? Without being, you know, rawr, you know, creating all kinds of distress. Okay, so we're going to have you do the other foot. Same thing. We're going to bring him here. Sit. Good. And I have the collar and the opposing hand. So if you're working on the right side, your left hand controls the collar. All right? Put the foot. Bang, bang, boom. Up. Bang. Up. There, see that? He just had his nails cut, so he's kind of like, why do I have to go through this again? <laughs> because you do, okay? Just like so. And he had a bath. I'm sorry? And he had and a bath. And I had to and do the same thing. He's been bathed frequently. I mean, no, with you guys? No, um, but he's been bathed in the past. Twice, yes. yes. But I mean, I just put him in a... Uh, a tub? A tub and hose him off? Yeah. yeah well, you know, he had, he had some warm water. Ah, see, he had hose water. <laughs> yeah. You want warm water. Okay. You don't want them, again, because anything that you create that the dog finds distasteful at this age, they imprint for for the rest of the lives. So if his experience is one of unpleasantness, then when you have to give him a bath when he's, say, 60 pounds, you're going to have a fight on him. Because his memory is, this was awful. Yeah. And what you want to do is practice. Practice calm, practice complete, and practice until the dog gives up the fight. Because once the, the whole message has to be is it doesn't matter how hard you fight anymore. At this age, it's controllable. Okay? 25, from about 35 pounds on up, it starts becoming less and less controllable. Because behind it, you also have the adult feet, the adult power behind the jaws. So when they go to slash them around, they're quicker and it hurts more. So we want to teach them really early on, you have nothing to fear here. Okay? If you just deal with it, you have nothing to fear here. So once they start relaxing, you can reward them. Good dog. This is what I'm after. Not that 
you know, raising cane and flaring your head around and trying to grab me and putting holes in me and using your feet and all that stuff. Okay? And again, with the leash, you only use what you need. Sit. Good. See how quick that was? Mm -hmm. Didn't acquire any pressure at all. I just up, you know, up raised on the leash and he automatically dropped into a sit position. Good. Pop. You ready? There we go. And this is something both you and your wife will have to do, just by virtue of the fact that I want both of you to be able to physically handle this dog when he gets to some size. Yeah, because I had to handle the last one. He Why? Didn't, he didn't play well with others. <laughs> ah! He would okay. listen, but he wouldn't play well with others. Off. Now, when you see him hedging like that, that's his way of saying, I'm thinking about jumping on him. Off. Tell him in advance so he understands off. that the, the consequences is paired with the act of not staying off. Leave it. Leave it. S-I-T. Sit. Leash up. Sit. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Now, you want to step in along the side here so that you can control him. There we go. Collar up. Okay, you want to, there you can just take the collar down. Here. No. Sit. This collar right here. Under the middle finger. Scooch right around his face there. That's good. Pressure. When he struggles, no, nope, leave nope. it. No, leave it, leave it. Okay, reset, let's do it again. He's like, wait, does this suck? Leave it, sit, 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 sit. Up. foot down. And sit. don't jang him. You're not going bounce, 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 bounce. It's just constant steady pressure upward until his butt hits the dirt. Good. Pressure. Leave it. Don't worry about it. Leash up. Sit. Sit. Leash up. Butt down. Leash up. Sit. Butt down. There you go. Regrip and go again. Because again, the inevitability is for the dog, I can't escape this. I may as well deal with this. That's the whole lesson. That's okay. We got time. We have at least another 40 minutes. Sit. Okay. Scooch him around. Sit. Should I stay on the pole I was on? Well, at this point, you can't. And when he grabs that leash, you zip no. it right through. Leave it. Leave it. It's too late. Do it while he's doing it, not afterwards. There we go. Left hand, left grip. Be still. There you go. Sit. Okay. Don't hesitate. What's happening is you're you're kind of nervous, so he's kind of feeding off of that. Mm -hmm. Sit. Like I said before, you move with purpose. You have great deliberation. I'm already there. Bang. Bang, bang, bang. The more he fights, the faster I move. Bang, 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 bang. Good boy for not struggling. All right. And then release. Okay? When you're nervous, you make him nervous. All right? I'm nervous. <laughs> practice makes perfect. Perfect practice makes perfecter. Sit. Makes Sit. perfecter? Perfecter. <laughs> More perfect. Look at that. See, now switch hands and do the other side. Leave it. Leave it. Sit, sit, sit. Push up. Good. Don't keep repeating yourself. Sit, 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 sit. This is one time. Sit. Look at that. Oh, good boy. <laughs> nice job. Good boy. Good boy. Yay. <laughs> her, 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 her. The oh. clapping was for you. <laughs> <laughs> right now. So that takes care of the front feet. Okay? That's a whole nother story. <laughs> Back feet's a whole nother story. So handling's a little different. We're gonna show you first. Good. This usually takes two people when they're young. So this is something both of you can do. And again, I have the same grip, okay? Except this time from the front. Come around this way so you can see. I gotta stay in front of the camera. All right, so now, I'm right where I was before, okay, on the handler side. So I'm on the dog's right side. Basically, same thing, okay. They have to learn to accommodate touch anywhere on their body, especially males. That includes the testes, that includes the penis, that includes everything. And just like with young humans, they don't like that much until a certain age, and then they like it more than they should. But by the same token, they're very protective of those parts, all right. And the more pressure I put there, the more irritated he becomes. Too bad. All right? And there's nerves that run right up on the inside of those thighs, run right on the east side of the penis. 
And essentially, you can control the behavior of the dog just by putting your fingers right against where the thigh meets the body. It stops from cold. If you do it too hard, they're going to flare around on you. Okay? But by the same token, it's kind of a relaxing thing because it reminds them biologically, I have stuff back there I value. I better be calm. All right? Once he's calm, and he's learning Stan, it's not something that we teach puppies this young. Um, it's not a skill they go home with, but it's something that we do instruct owners on because I want him to learn Stan behavior. Stan. I'm prepared for him to move. He goes to forge ahead, my right hand stops him. He goes to lean back, my left hand stops him. So basically when he's relaxed, I simply slide my hand down his feet, pick up a foot, boom, 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 boom. Stand. Good. Good, good. The rest of the sets. Boom, 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 boom. And when he struggles, same thing. Stand. Firm him up. Go on the inside. Good, good. Okay, and release. So that way he understands and appreciates the faster I stand here and take it, the faster this ends. Just like bats. Years ago I had a dog who hated bats. He was a show dog. Come on up, pup. Come on. Come on up. Good. All the way. Good pup. So he was bathed pretty frequently. At least once a week, if not more. Depending on his show schedule. Hated bats. Hated him. Didn't matter how many I gave him, he hated him. So one day, we had a big row in the tub. He's flashing around, he's blah, 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 and it was just ugly. So I snapped him up, and I'm correcting him. I'm like, you stop that now. And I'm like, look, once you realize the faster you do this, the faster you get through this. And he was like, finish the bath, next week comes. He sees me preparing all this stuff. He was meeting me in the tub. He was waiting for me. Got in, got his bath, five minutes, bang, bang, boom. Patch. The pointer. <laughs> A legacy of pointers who hate bats. Because <laughs> English pointers hate water. They hate it. Good boy. Very nice. Okay. So now we're going to move on to our next skill. And this skill has come, and it still is, a work in progress for this guy because he has absolutely no interest in lying down. None whatsoever. He will not do it willingly. He will not do it unwillingly. He will not do it for a hat or a cat or a bat or a rat. He just will not do it. So the reward, now we'll, we'll now watch. He's going to drop on the stone. <laughs> yeah. All right. We've done the luring method, which is actually take the lure down to the ground and see how he backs away from it. All right. So what we've done is I transfer it to the left hand. You see how close to the clasp I am? Grab the front legs, down. Release the reward once he's on the ground. Now, he'll bolt right back up. So I put my hand on his back and reward him for remaining here. Okay, as long as he doesn't struggle, he's fine. He starts to struggle and get up, my hand stops him. All right, good. And then we release. Okay. Okay. Good part. Then we do it again. We do not tell him to sit because a sit does not have to precede a down. And we don't want these guys getting into the habit of, if I sit, then I'm going to go down. All right, because there's times when you want your dog to sit and stay seated for a pretty protracted period of time, like when you're cutting his nails or cleaning his ears. You don't want him sliding into a down. Sit means sit, down means down. All right, so we have them stay in a sit, um, or we, we place them in a sit position without telling them to sit, and then we set it up. Leash sliding in between my fingers, right at the hook of his nose. Reach down, left hand gets the signal, down. And then I release the treat when his elbows hit the ground. Good, down. He can roll over on one side, that's fine. Good, down. He's not allowed to roll over like that. We don't permit it, we keep the leash low. Good. Good dog. But we want him to get comfortable with the down command, which he basically is, he objects to. A, a great deal because he's busy and he's smart and instinctively he knows that down means I have to take rest so he struggles with that just by virtue of the fact that he doesn't want to take rest he wants to be busy good sit good down not there. 
See that? Right there. No, it's not in that hand. Right there. Down. Good. Good boy. Uh-huh. Good. And anytime it goes to resist, I can stop him without having to use that much pressure. So it doesn't become a battle. Because again, as he ages, one of the most difficult things it is to teach a dog without conflict is the down. Because it's, it, it's not dominance and submission the way most people are led to believe it's dominance and submission. They don't like it because, like I said, he's young, he's impetuous, he wants to do things. If I put him in a down, what that tells his body is, I need to take rest. What his mind is telling him is, this is a conflict. I don't want to take rest. Just like kids, it's time for a nap. I don't want to take a nap. No, you're taking a nap. Two seconds later, okay, but you need to convince them that they need to do that. Good part. So, we're going to have you do that. And again, you're going to hold the leash just about the clasp. You're going to have your treat in that hand. All right, see how it's going for it? Leave it. Ah, good. There it is. Grab the leash or grab the legs. Down. Don't release it until after he's on the table because we're going to fade that right away. Okay. Hold that. Here's a tree. Teeny tiny, little itty bitty. Just like so. Both hands down at the same time. Down. Down. Keep that left hand in front of his nose so he can take the tree. Good. Put your right hand on his back. Good. Do I let go of the leash? You can at this point. Yeah. Good, boy. good, and tell him, okay, and he can get it. Okay, okay, okay. good puppy. All right, pretty good. What do you think there, big fella? Big fella, huh? All right, now, when you go to tell him to sit, just simply tell him sit, and when he refuses, your gent gentle, upright pressure on the leash, don't yank, it's, he's not a yo-yo, just steady pressure in one direction. Sit, sit. leash up. See how that works? And then as soon as he sits, relax the leash pressure so that he understands that the absence of pressure means he's right. Okay, good pup, good boy. Now, at this point in time, the only thing that we're repeatedly giving him rewards for, like tangible rewards, like a treat or something like that, is for the recall to assure that he comes to us and a down. Everything else is on an intermittent schedule of reinforcement. He gets it after he completes the task, but it's not on our presence when we get it, when we, you know, when we acknowledge it. The base, basically, yes means your reward's coming, and okay means there it is, okay? So that way, you know, anytime you say either of those things, the reward can come at any time. And he understands that okay is not necessarily a release. Okay is the absence of pressure. It means he's free to move away from or do something other than or get a reward for, okay? Review that line several times. That's the most important critical rule of dog training right there. Good dog. Okay, so now we're going to do heel. And actually we're going to do the recall first. Okay, bud. Good. <clears throat> His name is very important. Got her. Got her. Good. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's a default. It means come to me. Or at least pay attention to me so that I can direct you to do something. All right? Basically, a lot of times, people use their dog's name in vain. Gunner, I said wall, wall. And the dog's going, yeah, okay. And normally what owners inadvertently do is teach their dogs to run away when they hear their names. So every time we say his name, we want to make sure that we reward it with something that's going to encourage him to respond appropriately in the future. Gunner. Pop, pop. Hey, Gunner. Good. Here. Sit. Good dog. Okay. So every time he hears his name, he gets rewarded. All right. And it's the precursor to the here command, which is the come to me command. Gunner. Here. Quick, quick. Like a buddy. Good boy. Here. Yeah. Sit. Good. See what I did there? Motion is what pulls the dog towards you. A lot of times when people are calling their dogs, they're marching on them. I said, come here. And the dog's moving in the opposite direction. Um, what I want the dog to do is willingly come to me. Got him here. Good boy. Nope. 
Here. Good. Right. Sit. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. I don't want him focusing on pocket or hand. I want him looking in the face. Here is not the act of going from A to B. Here is the act of being at C. In front of me, facing me. All right? And the reason we want to harden this skill is because with dogs, the only thing they think about is what they're looking at. So if I get him to look at me, he's not going to be thinking about what might be going on around him. Make sense? Okay. So when we go to practice this skill, we have two things we could be practicing. The six-foot leash and the 15-foot leash, which you'll go home with. Got her here. Good. Sit. Good. Okay. Now, he still has a penchant for going, what? I don't want to. Which is why he still runs on a long line when he's outside and on a leash and collar when he's inside. And this is something that you're going to have to carry forward for a considerable length of time. Um, he's very, very opinionated. He really likes, uh, he believes his own press. Let's put it that way. Okay? So basically, we have to make sure that it's not, you know, these things are not on him in order to punish him. These things are on him in order to assure that he remains right. Okay, there's a big difference. Good dog. Out. Out. Good. Good. Well, not so, what we want to do is practice the recall when he's not looking. And we start by sharpening his hearing by saying his name, which we have preconditioned to mean there's value in returning to us when the period ends. You get a reward, you get to play a game of tug, or I get to fun you up and tell you how wonderful you are before I send you on your way again. All within the confines of the leash. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So when we call him, he can't go any further. I'm not going to yank on him, but if he refuses, I can apply enough drag to where he doesn't have a choice but to come to me. Gunner! Pop, pop, pop! Gunner! Here! Good boy! Sit. Very nice. See how easy that is? So he's rewarded for being right. If he chooses to be wrong, his struggle remains his responsibility, not yours. You see the difference there? Okay. So you try. Just keep doing it. Yep. Doing it. Doing it. Like a broken record, dude. There we go. You want to keep them in your right pocket, your right hand, unless you're left-handed. Uh, just makes it a little bit easier. So you're going to let him play to the end of the leash. Good boy, Gunner. Good pup. And when he distracts, you're going to stand relatively still. Call the dog to you. If he fails to come, what you want to do is just apply enough drag on the leash contiguously, not yank, 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 yank. Like now, call him, Gunner. Gunner, come here. The command is here. Here. All the way in. Back away. Back away. And call. Good. Now step in the meet him. Good boy. Good dog. We don't use come, and here's why. By the time the dogs get here, even when they're this age, they're conditioned to believe that come means run away. Okay? He's got a lot of run in him. You go, Gunner, come here. He's like, all right? So we change the context by changing the word and making it a lot more encouraging for him to be with you. Now, that right there is another thing I want you to study very closely. If you impose yourself... I mean, if you basically, you know, you're, you're in the dog's flight zone. You're pushing him away from you. So, like I said earlier, if you advance on a dog you're calling to you, you're pushing him away. If you retreat from a dog you're calling to you, you're pulling him into you. So, when you call him Gunner here, and he's reluctant, that drag in your backward motion is going to carry him to you. So, when he's in the correct proximity to end up right, you step in and stop motion. Make sense? Do it again. Gunner, here. Step, no, no. He's too far away. See, now what happens is you're gonna, if, when you lean into him, you're going to push him out of your flight zone. So you want him to come into your flight zone so that you both share the same space. Leave it. Leave it. Good. Control your leash better. Here. Good. Come on. Here. Here. Step out. Back, back, back. Here. Here. Now meet him halfway. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And, and practice is going to make that a little bit more fluid until he understands reward doesn't happen until he's this close. Okay? And the reason we want to pull him in 
um, I just actually sent a dog home that um, had come here for training uh, a while ago and did very, very well with the training, but the owners got kind of lazy. So they'd call the dog to come to them, and then as soon as he was within a close range, they would move right into his flight zone, and it would push him out. So when they, when they started realizing what was happening, he would sit about 10 feet away from them. And then it became this conflict about how to get the dog to come closer. So they brought him back. They were going out of country for, a, for almost a month. And they brought him back and they said, you know, if you can take a look at this behavior. I said, sure, no problem. And that's exactly what had happened. They put too much pressure on the dog. Instead of allowing him the opportunity to choose how to be right, they basically were forcing him to be wrong. So he was kind of like, you know what, since I can't be right and I can't be wrong, I'm just going to do my own thing. So they would reach for him. They'd snatch at him, or they'd run him down and try and grab him, and they completely sour the entire experience for him. So we want to avoid that. And the, reason, the way we want to avoid that, always make sure that there's nothing, there's not, let's put it this way, not necessarily nothing, because there's going to be times you're going to do things the dog finds out of feeling. Um, when you practice the recalls, light and happy, um, and never put anything <coughs> that the dog is going to find unpleasant attached to the end of it. So you can increase the likelihood the dog will continue to respond, even though it's 6 o'clock at night and you told the kids to turn off the cartoons, it's time to get ready for dinner type behavior. Oh, I don't want to. He's outside playing. You call him to come. He's going to come more readily, even though it means he's not going to be able to play with his little buddy downstairs, or he knows you guys are going out and you're going to put him in a crate or something like that. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So are you comfortable with that so far? All right. We're going to work on... Heel, which is where we've gotten the best result but the most opposition from this dog. Good pup. Because he's a lunger. He'll lunge at things, which is including, you know, people, dogs. And it's not, again, at this age, it's not aggressive, but it's practice for aggression later on. And the reason I say that, because all play is a preparedness for behavior, predatory behavior in the future. When you see puppies play with each other, and they're rah, rah, barty, barty, growly, and they're grabbing each other's backs, and they're grabbing necks and legs and stuff like that. It's all essentially that neotenized predatory response, and they do that in preparation to condition them on what to do in the future if they need to. Okay? So launching yourself in someone's face, bad idea. Okay? When we heal, the dog is on the left-hand side. Gunner, pop up. Good. You ready? Let's go. Good pop. Sit. Good. You start with your left leg. You notice I have most of the leash in my right hand. My left hand is with my right hand. It's not on the leash. Alright? Because this is the part that does the work. He goes to move forward. You ready? Gunner. Hello. Let's go. Good. Good. See how loose I'm holding it? Mm -hmm. He moves away from me. I simply move away from him. Good pop. Sit. Good. And again, that very little pressure made him sit. Now, I moved without telling him to stay or whatever, but essentially, good pop. Everything with the heel is opposite land. All right? The dog goes left, you go right. The dog goes forward, you go back. Okay? But you're always working away from the leash. You never turn into the leash like this because then you're both wrong. When you go to make a left hand tur turn with a dog that crowds, your left hand is already on the leash, your left hand goes back, your left leg goes forward. See how we backed off? Because that pressure means, how do I get away from it? Okay? It's not about yanking. It's about letting the dog find where that absence of pressure is. Make sense? Mm -hmm. You ready? Hey, you ready? Let's go. Good, good. Nice job. He's not going to have a perfect heel because he's a puppy. Here we go. Left arm back, left leg forward. See how I stopped him? Good, good. Very nice. Hurry up, bud. Quick, 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 quick. Sit. Sit. Good. Very nice. Yes. Okay. Easy stuff. Easy stuff. And with this guy, because he's so young, I tell you right now, we're already running out of dog. When they're this young, five, ten minutes, a couple times a day, 
the best you're going to get until they start building A, memory, and B, stamina. Okay? That's with all the exercises. So pick your battles. You know, if you're working on extracting him from a crate, that's your exercise for that five minutes. Okay? It's not like you have to cram everything he knows in that five minutes. You work five minutes on this skill, five minutes on this skill, five minutes on this skill, but you work all skills every day. Okay? Okay. All right. Do it up. Okay. Got it. Hold on a sec. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to hurt you if I see you hold your wrist that way. It's over the thumb. This is not a wrist loop. Okay. I've seen guys bigger than you get their arms broke by dogs smaller than him. Hmm. Okay? It's all about a nurse shot. Over the thumb, make a fist. Okay? You got that? Mm -hmm. Thumb, fist. Two fingers, like the reins of a horse. Most everything is held at navel, you know, or right around your, your, your abdomen area, abdominal area. Uh, what I instruct a lot of owners to do, just by virtue of the fact that with the prong collar, you need so little pressure that you can actually put your thumbs in your pants pockets, belt loops, the waist of your pants, keep your hands still. Because if your leash is right, it's about one third from your hand to the dog. This is a six foot leash. All right, and we're about the same height, so that's it. This is correct. That way he has enough room to be right, but he doesn't have enough room to be wrong. If he hits the end of the leash, that momentum is gonna carry him back. That pressure is gonna push him back to my side. All right, my legs do all the work. See what happens when I step forward? See what happens when I turn sideways? He doesn't have a choice. Okay, see how that works? Mm -hmm. All right, if he heads off, all I have to do is open that hand and turn in the opposite direction. Just like so. And again, you don't want to do it hard just by virtue of the fact that he's wearing a piece of equipment just to keep him a little bit more awake. Not good. Yes, good dog. Voluntary behavior is always rewarded. Good boy. It increases the likelihood that you'll see it in the future. Now, healing is the act of him walking with you. Walking. And we say let's go when they're young like this, um, just by virtue of the fact that heal and hear, too similar, um, and one, we cannot expect a perfect heal from an animal this young. We just can't. That's a skill that requires many, many weeks of practice, and he just doesn't have the mental stamina. No puppy does. Okay, although he's pretty clever, um, you know, he's still a baby. Good pup. Okay, your hands are together. There we go. All right, let's go. Left let's leg go. starts. Left leg always starts. Because that becomes the signal. Good boy. Good boy. Good pup. Keep moving. Don't let him stop. Because again, that pressure is going to dictate to him, I must keep moving. Good. And what you want to do when you line up your stop is tell him to sit before you actually sit. stop moving. Before you actually stop moving. Oh, good boy. Okay, he sat in front. That's why you want to say it before you actually stop. You start There's that upward. One on your side. All right. You start that upward leash pressure as you make your last step. Sit. So by the time you stop, he knows where he's supposed to go. Let's go. Good pop. Good boy. Good boy. Tell him to sit. Sit. Slow him down. Leash up. Because you want to prevent him from crossing in front of you. And what I would, and again, they eventually. As long as you control the outcomes appropriately, he sits in alignment with your trajectory. So if I'm heading this way, he's heading the same way. He doesn't fishtail in to face you or sit cockeyed. Um, at this point in time, and again, it's a lot of pressure for you to be perfect when it's just simply not possible. And it's just a matter of repetition and repetition and repetition. What I do with these little guys is like you were doing here by pushing him alongside a small space so that he has no choice but to sit straight and ignore the distractions. Okay? okay? Good. Out! Leave it. Good. Out, of course, means whatever's in your mouth, drop it. And leave it means whatever you want in your mouth, you can't have. Um, cool. Should right. I always start from with him being seated, or does it matter? It, it's easier, two things. It's a lot easier if you start it that way just by virtue of the fact that Eventually, that's where he's going to end up. Out! That's where he's going to end up. You want to heel is always on the left. 
you always want to work in front and left. So if you start at a sit, that's fine. Okay. As he matures into the role of an obedient dog, heel becomes not just an action, it becomes a position. So you would be able to call him to heel from any position, whether he's out there or wherever. If you're standing still and he's on your right and you say heel, he should travel to your left. But that's a skill that you, you know, two weeks is not enough time to make this dog know everything he needs to know. But we have, we rough in all of the skills that we can in a short enough period of time for him to go home with a memory of what it is he's supposed to do. Practice is what makes him proficient. Okay? That's why I said, you might only have, you know, if you have 15 minutes a day to work with this dog, you're breaking it up in three five minute increments to work on each of those skills that he needs the most proficiency on. Whether it's the recall, the heel, crate exits, whatever. Door behavior, greeting behavior with strangers, so on and so forth. And what we practice with you is exactly how you expect your strangers to greet them. And you coordinate your strangers greeting with him the exact same way I coordinate it with you. Stand perfectly still, don't look at the dog, don't talk to the dog, don't touch the dog, he must be calm. And you toggle him between his desire for that attention and his responsibility to self-control. He has enough room to be right, no room to be wrong. And let him figure it out. Leave it. I think somebody's bored. He's had a very big couple of days. Yesterday was Puppy Palooza. He was out for a little bit. Out! Leave it. Leash up. There we go. Good dog. Now, we're not going to review the out and leave it because we've already run out of dog. He's done. He's baby. Mentally, he's gone. When they start doing that, it's too much pressure. Okay? And it's like I said, he's, he's, although he's a very clever little monkey, and he's a very stubborn little monkey, he's still a baby. He's got the attention span of, you know, a, a, a gnat, literally. Um, so we need to make sure that we end on a high note. Good job. Well done. There are periods of confinement before work. There are periods of confinement after work. So if you know that you have five minutes to work him on, you know, something, plan in advance that he comes out of a period of confinement. Make sure that he's relieved himself before you confine him, and then make sure that he doesn't have to relieve himself immediately after you release him from the crate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that way there's a lot of coordinating. It's just like with babies. Leave it. Tell him make it stop. Leave it. There we go. Good. Good, good. Good boy. boy. Very good. Boy. Um, and when he does that, when he defaults into that, that gets rewarded because it's a choice. He could have continued to say, do this, replay, ring around the tail. Um, you don't have to pay it off with a tree, okay? But you do need to acknowledge that he made the right choice, which you did. You knelt down and, and petted him and told him he was a good dog because he's basically spent. Um, look, his eyes are like, <laughs> he's like, he's so kind of a half mass. What, what times have you been feeding him? Um, he's been, what time? Six-ish, 6.30. What, dinner? Feeding breakfast. Oh, breakfast usually around 7, 7.30 in there. Okay. So what I would recommend doing is you get up so early in the morning, take him outside to relieve himself because he's already patterned to not eat until later. Take his food with him. Well, my house is literally five minutes from my home, so okay. I can put him back in. Ah, get him off there. Control oh. that dog. Good. Um, and basically it's like, yeah, I mean, it's, what time does your wife get up? She's, she's like me, she's in the bunk. Oh, man. Um, but basically, yeah, I mean, he's got, he got, the first three or about the first four or five days he was here, it was rough. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I want to choke him. I want to just I beat the living there. shit out of him. Um, but we did, we persevered, and he ended up right. Um, and then when he got, it's not necessarily a companion, but he had someone to spend some time with um, as of about a week ago. And he was actually quiet before that. And even with the distraction of having another dog to bunk with, he was much, much better than he was. And he will take a correction from any room in the house. It's just this big point, quiet. And he'll be like, I'm sure. If he persists, and this is out, this is, if he persists, he's telling me he needs something. Okay? Because if you listen very carefully, he is telling, he is giving you information. At a certain point in time during the day, out. Stop him. Leave it. Leave it. Um, at a certain point in time of the day, he is very, very vocal about certain things. He knows when breakfast is coming, he knows when dinner is coming. If he goes outside and he is not, uh, if he's not productive, he goes back into his crates. He does not get the run of the house, so that way we don't have to worry about him keeping the in the house. 
And again, the only time he's actually in the house is on a leash and collar with a supervising adult. And the only time he's allowed to do that is after he's been productive outside. And on the video clip um, that I'm sending tonight, on the very last video clip, because I still have a big 15 minute section I gotta upload, um, the very last clip tells exactly what his schedule is, when he poops and when he pees. Okay, so you kind of have to be a clock watcher too. Oh, it's that time, he probably needs to go out. Eventually what you want to do is hold off a little bit until he starts telling you. So that way you can take him out, he's productive, you can reward him by allowing him time with you on a leash and collar in the house. That way you can supervise his behavior. So when he goes sniffing around and doing stuff and you know trying to get involved, don't let him do this. Don't let him do no. this. If you don't want him doing it in your home, don't let him do it anywhere. Okay? And it's the same, yeah, he's he's spent now, he's tired. Um, and essentially, it's the same anywhere. This still constitutes an indoor space. Okay. Yeah, always walk them on the left. Yep. Yep. When you say okay, you're basically stationary, and he's free to move on the leash and collar. Okay. But when you're in motion, now obviously he doesn't have to heal all the time. But by the same token, if you're in motion, you're practicing healing for a minute or so, then you tell him okay, you're still in motion. He's the, the tendency is going to be to want to keep him on that side. Out! Leave it! Leave it. Leave it. Too late now, he's got it. Don't go fishing for it. No. Yeah, that's how you create conflicts. You go in after a predator for something he's got in his mouth, you're going to get bit. You got grandkids or people that come over and populate your house pretty frequently and you grab something inappropriately and they go after him for it, they're going to get bit. It's a cooperative event. Alright, we got to stop though, because look at it. He's like. <laughs> I'm asleep, stand it up. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come and see How um, with the other dog? Now, they live, they stay in the basement, basically. Right. But they give their dog free around the house. I mean, but I do close the door because I don't want them upstairs. And that's perfectly fine. Um, and the thing is, though, is you know, it's going to be kind of a conflict with him for a couple of days because his expectation is, I'm home. I can act like a door. My buddy's downstairs. I want to play, 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 play. Good thing she's bark. gone for two days. Good, good. And again, same thing. Uh, the, you know, with him, he's become so hardened to confrontation. It doesn't mean anything to him at all, which is a bad place for a young dog to be because he has no fear, none whatsoever, which is fine. That's great. But by the same token, he has no respect either. Okay? That's the problem. So when you correct him, it has to be meaningful enough for him to say, I don't think I want to do that again. Okay? So in a situation with him, you have to kind of balance between what you are willing to permit and what you are absolutely opposed to behavior-wise. No. And quite frankly, when it comes to certain things with him, because of this and because of the biting and stuff like that, you're on restriction. You get what you want, and you'll hear me say this repeatedly through the video taste. You get what you want, and I get what I want. And that's essentially how life with a dog works. It has nothing to do with battling with them and dominance and all that other crap. It has everything to do with just patiently waiting them out. He does not have patience. It's taken us two weeks to help him establish what patience he has. Okay? And it's finally paying off, hence the prong collar. Otherwise, I think this is probably the third puppy in maybe 40 years I put on. A puppy this age. Now, it does occur. Um, some people do it with a lot more regularity than I like, but for the most part, he shouldn't have that much to put on. But that's the kind of dog he is. He's that dog. Okay? Sweet, wonderful, nice. There's nothing wrong with this dog, and I don't want to give you that impression. But he's a hard, hard dog. Okay? He's very opinionated, he's very bright, and he has just got a mind like a steel trap. Because once it closed, it stays closed. It's all about the gunner. Good pudding head! Good boy. I'm tired. Um, okay, do you have any questions? Is there something that you want to address? No, just, just, no, oh, the crate. Um, I mean, I just put him in and leave the room. You know, kennel up, and you're about your business elsewhere. And like I said, he's in the busiest room in the house. All of our traffic originates in the kitchen. Dog traffic, people traffic, food traffic, everything happens in the kitchen. He had to accommodate that. When the kitchen was empty, he would scream like he was on fire. And then all of a sudden he started realizing, you know what, being by myself ain't such a bad thing. 
because what we did, his conditioning had been, if I put up a fuss, I get attention. What we spent the first almost week of him being here was, if you put up a fuss, you're not going to like the attention that you get. And he finally realized that after the exhaustive periods of multiple hours in a row of allowing him to scream himself hoarse. When we finally came in, we came in like white on rice. You do not ever make that noise. And he was like, whatever. Okay? So it took him, because again, the vast majority of his life, his experiences dictated when I make noise, I get attention. Okay? And in puppies, it's actually much harder to deal with than it is in the adult dog. Because he has no natural fear. He had no so we had to provide him with a consequence sufficient for him to understand this is not something I want in the future. And it took us a couple of days to figure out what it was. You know? Like this morning, um, normally I'll put a water bowl out and then I start taking the puppies out. Well, this morning I didn't do it. I was like, I got to get the puppies out because one of the puppies was like, I'm being in my crate, so I'll make sure nobody can mess their crate. Took him out, took the other puppy out, and he started whining. He's like, Where's my water? And he saw me pick up the bowl and I was filling it. And I just looked at him and said, quiet. He said, okay. You know, and he waited. Deprivation. Yep. And he was like, okay, I'll wait. I know I'll get it, but I'll wait. Yeah. And it took him a long yeah. time to figure it out. Yep. It really did. It took him a long time. And we use, we use deprivation a lot, but most of the time we use it with adult dogs. We know we're very rarely if ever use it with puppies. But he was so good. It didn't matter if you screamed at him, shook him up. It didn't matter what you did to him. He was not going to shut up. So basically what we did was say, okay, what is it that you want so bad? Food, water, attention. You figure it out. You'll get it when you're quiet. And he finally was like, man, okay. Yeah. And the thing is, though, is because it's the exact opposite of what he was doing in the past. And then all of a sudden he was like, oh, and the light bulb went off. So now basically he's a little bit more responsive. He's a lot more responsive. And the thing is, is now he's smart enough to say, when he's persistent, there's always something he wants, always. And when we give these guys, it's like I say in the video, he is not allowed free access to water because he has a urination deficit. His little bladder is still not, you know, uh, trained enough to compete with his needs for water. So he has to urinate frequently. Therefore, he has to drink frequently. Uh, the rule is, and you'll hear this, is two ounces per one pound of body weight. So if he weighs 25 pounds, in order for normal bodily functions to occur, he has to have 50 ounces of water. Obviously, he's not going to drink that all at one time. But he should have access to it. Some days are going to be more demanding than others. Okay? So basically, we want to give him about 10 ounces intermittently throughout the day to equal 50 ounces. If he drinks all 10 ounces, great. Okay? 10 ounces really isn't that much. All right? And his little belly can only handle so much. He actually is, is much better than the other puppy we have here that's the same age. He will stop drinking when he's not thirsty anymore. The other puppy will tank and tank and tank and tank until he looks like he's going to explode. Um, he won't. He's got a little bit more sense. But again, when he's thirsty, he's going to drink. He should not be allowed to drink his fill because he'll be taking him out to relieve himself every 30 minutes. And if you don't address him, he leaks because his bladder just doesn't have the strength to control. So you want to really mitigate that from the time he gets fed in the morning until right before 7 o'clock. No more water after that. And then basically you take him out of the room to make sure that his bladder is empty before you put him up. And he's been good. He's been sleeping six and seven hours straight. Okay, so there's going to be some disruption when you do take him home, but it should not be that bad. And again, um, like I said, the videos that I'm going to, there's a whole slew of them. Um, there's the videos that I've already sent, which basically are just, you know, little bits that are not as concentrated as the stuff that we're doing here. Plus this one, for the most part, I'm just going to send the whole thing to YouTube so that you have, uh, you have the whole thing. Um, and then it'll be access, you know, your access. It's private. No one else can see it unless you give them the, the, the uh, whatever it's called, address, the URL. Um, but basically, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's been a challenge. He's been a lot of fun. He's been an interesting. He's driving us crazy. And I bet. The line. I bet. And the thing is, though, is, and, I, and I was telling Peter the other day, if I sent this dog home with no other skill than to understand what the word quiet meant, <laughs> you guys would worship me. Yeah. But I sent him home housebroken too, so. See, now the cool thing will be is at 4 o'clock in the morning, if he starts whining, you can just go, quiet. Yeah. 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 But the thing is, though, is if he's whining at 4 o'clock in the morning, he's got to go. Yeah. 
That's how long. It's been over a week since yeah. he's been. He's, he's, I mean, once he got the pattern, not only did he no longer pee in his crate, but he was sleeping from 11.30 until 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. That's progress. And yeah. once he got it, he was like, hey, this is cool. Yeah. I actually, Peter will come down in the morning because another dog will be making noise. Yeah. He'll be sound asleep in his crate. He yep. has to drag him out of his crate. Except for the other guy. Yeah, the, see, I, that woman said that, you know, about you can't leave them because their bladders are so small. So that's why I was taking work. You have to train Believe them. Believe me, I, yeah. I am so busy. I don't have time. Yeah. It's tough. I would be trying yeah. to get the crews out and have him out there with me, and um, yeah, and I was letting him run wild. And then I'm like, Gunner, come, because the truck's starting to pull out. And then you know I'm lunging at him to yeah. grab him. So you're and creating then you all running. these little conflicts, yeah. right? Yeah. So I was but, doing it all right. <laughs> and the thing is, is basically the leash and collar acts as a signifier for him as well. I'm on my leash and collar. It's all about the work. If you want to keep him in the mindset that we're all about the business. As he matures, you start fading the use of the leash and collar. But the thing is, though, is it's just like kids. You're not going to handle. A, you're not going to hand an 11 year old the keys to your car, are you? Right. Okay. Why do you think for a moment that a puppy that young is going to understand a word out of your mouth? Okay. <laughs> it's a practicing event. It's something that you go through life together. Okay. The thing is, though, is species A, human. Species B, dog. Woohoo! What are you doing? I mean. You, you know, and the thing is, is you have to teach them how to learn, okay? And the thing is, they're dogs. They have their own, you know, social hierarchy. They have their own means of communication. They have all these things that are just adamantly opposed to anything human. We have rationalization. We have communication. We have these, okay? They don't. So we have to figure out a way to help them understand us. It's easier for us to learn how to be a little bit more like a dog than it is to ever expect them to be a little bit more like a human. It's just not possible. Okay?